A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Everybody and uh, welcome to Agarn, one of my favourite mountains here in Snowdonia because, as you might be able to see, the views down to the Ogwen Valley and right across to the Snowdon Range are absolutely amazing. It's a bit hazy today and I was a bit frustrated about that on the way up because I thought most of the, uh, the photographic opportunities were going to be a bit diminished. However, as is often the case when you get haze, if you sort of look 45 degrees to the sun either side, there are some good opportunities for kind of silhouettes of mountains. I'm going to focus on that until the sun goes down and uh, then when we get into blue hour I'll head back down and uh, focus on the Ogwen Valley. That's my plan and uh, very excited for all of it. I'm most excited to be honest about the fact that I've, uh, I've got to the summit because as you'll know if you've been up here before it's a bit of a slog so please that's over. I've also been attacked by midges, which is not so fun, so I'm trying to keep moving. If you've ever been attacked by midges, you'll know it's, it's a bit uncomfortable. You might know them as other things in different parts of the world, but everywhere I've experienced them in the world, they've been annoying. And if you dislike midges as much as I do, you'll know that the, uh, the thing to look out for on the weather forecast is uh, a wind speed of more than seven miles an hour, because their little wings can't cope with that, so you don't get bothered by them if there's a little bit of a breeze, but tonight is still. Which midges aside, I'm very pleased about. I'll shut up about midges now. Well, as is so often the case, the, uh, the sun with about 25 minutes until it sets has gone behind a cloud and uh, taken away all the golden light. Which is a bit of a shame, particularly when you've walked up 750 metres of elevation. Ugh. And now I'm surrounded by flies because I'm 85% sweat at the moment, I think. But luckily for you, you can't smell anything on YouTube, so it's not all bad. Anyway, the, uh, the last time I was up here, I've just remembered, I heard what I think is probably the worst photography advice I've ever heard. There were two blokes sat here, I don't think they knew each other, but one of them seemed to be a beginner photographer and the other one purported to be a bit more advanced. And uh, he was giving the beginner what seemed to be unsolicited advice and I don't think it was very good advice. I have to remember exactly what he said and I can't remember word for word but he basically said pictures are worth a thousand words or that's what people say and that's what you should aim for with your photos. And all the way down I was kind of thinking what did he mean by that and all I could think was he meant that you should try and come up with a photo that's so complex people could say or write a thousand words about it which I kind of understand, but when you're a beginner trying to figure out the complexities of composition, you don't want to be thinking, can people say a thousand words about this? Can I make this complex enough that people could write an essay about it? And uh, yeah, I don't think that was very helpful. You might disagree, what do you think? But I thought it was terrible advice. Maybe that's just me. I, uh, I can't remember if I've told you about my Jelly Baby addiction yet. If you don't know what Jelly Babies are, if you're not from the UK, basically they're these little bundles of sugar, essentially, that pose as uh, babies, jellied babies. And um, yeah, basically, I bought loads of them because somebody said that it's much better to do that or cheaper to do that than buying energy gels for cycling. And uh, yeah, I bought a huge amount of them and I can't stop eating them. So, fine on days like this, but when I'm sat at my desk all day for eight hours and I'm plowing through them, the sugar high is horrific, to be honest. Anyway, I'm going to take my telephoto off and put my 24-70 uh, on, put my GoPro on my chest and hopefully get some photos as we go back down since this was such a giant disappointment. It happens. It does happen. You might be able to see, although it is really super hazy this side, where I was for the last video last week. So 
there's Trifan and I was the other side of it when uh, I was squelching around near that lake. It is a wonderful part of the world this, it really is. Bit of a nothing shot really, could do with a, a group of hikers going along that path. Oh well. 29 millimetres, f6.3, 40th of a second, which is giving me an ISO of 250. And I'm holding the camera to my face versus out here so that you can see what's going on just for extra stabilisation. Hope you don't mind. I do try and keep the camera out here when I'm using the GoPro, but uh, when the sun's going down, it's sometimes better not to. You can see the sweat on my camera even. Disgusting. Bit of foreground action. I'll go F2.8 to get it out of focus. Some quite nice tones in that. Hoo-ah! Right. Okay. Down we go. Right. Here is a, an opportunity for a shot, I reckon. Just on the edge of that crest there. Kind of similar to the, uh, the Roy's Peak, the classic Roy's Peak shot in Wanaka, New Zealand that you see a lot of. Basically, I'm gonna stand right on the edge of that crest and then you just get the, the background, which is Penaroan. And uh, I think that'll look quite good. So I'll set my tripod up on a timer and then I'll run over there and stand on the edge. Okay then, I don't know if you can see that, but this kind of works. You've got the kind of a leading line of the path and then I'm going to stick myself right in the middle of the frame. Lock the focus, F, let's go F5. That gives us an ISO of 250. If you didn't see my video last week on uh, auto ISO and minimum shutter speed, you might find that interesting. But I'm going to go time-lapse mode. Image count 100, shooting interval every three seconds-ish, set, action. Yes, it's taking shots, right. Hurry, hurry. Don't fall over. Right, the perspective has changed for me, so I've kind of got to guess where the edge is from the viewpoint of the camera, and I think, I think it's here. Ideally, I'll find the spot where the camera can still see my feet. Right, not a bad effort, but I think I can get one a bit further down here and uh, use a slightly longer focal length to A, get a bit more compression, and B, to make me a bit bigger in the frame. See how we go with that. One of the benefits of haze is that for me today I'm wearing all dark colours and so I naturally stand out a lot more than all of the mountains because there's no contrast really to speak of outside of my clothes. So that's, that's one positive of the current conditions. Ooh. And I'm going to go for a landscape shot this time to get more of the mountains in the background in. In fact, I'm going to go with 50 mil, but I'm going to take the tripod down closer to the floor so you don't get the, the bottom of the valley in. It looks more dramatic, I think, if you can't see as much of what's behind the edge. I've got no idea if this is interesting at all. Talk amongst yourselves, if not. Thanks for continuing to watch. Right. What do we get from here, then? That's a bit more like it. I can go more than 50 mil. I can go... Let's go 70 mil. I'm gonna stay with the 40th of a second shutter speed, even though I'm on a tripod, just because I might be moving around a little bit. So, okay, let's go. Oh, I hope this is worthwhile. Right, we'll see how that turned out. Now, to be honest, the more kind of traditional orthodox thing to do would have been to go really, really long with the focal length. Oh, have that removed. Something like, I don't know, 400 mil get the camera way, way, way back, and then zoom into the mountain behind so that you don't get the top of the mountain, and then you end up with a really dramatic background uh, to the subject. Thing is, when you've got this much haze, 
it's difficult to make that background look all that impressive and dramatic. So that's why I'm not doing that. Well, that and also I don't fancy walking all the way up there to get the camera again. So 70 mil it is. Oh, I've got to run, haven't I? Because the card fills up. I tell you what, next time I'm up here, I will definitely be up for sunrise because the sunrise is somewhere in that vicinity, depending on the time of year. And uh, I've never seen sunrise from here, which is ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I really want to. So I shall be bringing a tent, I think. Hopefully in the not too distant future. That's quite a nice path shot, wide shot with uh, Trifan and the lake in the background. You have to stand here, otherwise the uh, the lake gets a bit obscured. I think this shot is more suggestive without a sweaty person in it. Let's have a look. No, don't want lens cap off again. You'd think I was new to this, wouldn't you? I can go to 32 mil and still have the lake and the top of Trifan in the frame. Focus on the mid-ground, F4. I don't really care too much if the background isn't pin sharp. Not the aim of the game with this photo. I think it might need to be landscape to get the most out of it. And yeah, I just, conditions aren't quite right. You can play around with this in post, but there's not enough contrast in the frame to really highlight this path, which is a shame. Still, I'll take a photo on my phone and it can go in my uh, my sunrise folder. If you don't know what I mean by that, then I'll link a video uh, here. Well, I don't know if I'll get anything else tonight, but uh, in case I don't, I'll quickly thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I've used Squarespace for years for my website and online store needs, and I would highly, highly recommend it. Particularly if, like me, you're not technical in any way and you don't really know the first thing about putting a website together. It's fantastic. You can use it for blogging. As I say, you can use it to host your online store, to sell all kinds of different products, whether they're physical or digital. And uh, it's a fantastic place for us photographers to host our portfolio. So if you'd like to check it out, then go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, then go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off that first purchase. And uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend it to all photographers to check out if you're looking for somewhere online to uh, showcase your photos and your product. Yes. All the sheep are looking at me. Got to get a photo of that. I mean, it's sheep staring at me in the dark. Not really going to win any awards, I don't think. Don't run away. Oh. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.